GDLS Canada, an industry leader dedicated to supporting our customers and the community. My name's Ahmed Jama, go by AJ. Born in Edmonton, Alberta. I'm a lawyer. I do corporate commercial law and uh, real estate. And did you know you wanted to be a lawyer uh, from early on in life, or, or did that, how did that come to be? Yeah. I knew I didn't want to be a lawyer. I was going into business, but as fate would have it, my brother wanted to be a lawyer, he became a lawyer, and uh, after some time of working in the family business, I just realized that uh, I needed to do something different. And so I looked at what my brother was doing, and we decided that we wanted to start a firm together. So. Uh, ended up going to law school and from there we started a firm in Edmonton. What, what was your family business? It was so many businesses. My dad was a classic entrepreneur. We had clothing stores, we had restaurants, we had uh, you know an egg breaking plant, we had I mean he just had so many different businesses and uh, I was involved in sort of maintaining a lot of those businesses so I became a jack of all trades, uh, you know, expert of none, and so I, that was part of the reason why I felt I needed to go and get a specific skill. How, how many children uh, were in your family? Five boys. All five boys, and I understand all five boys played lacrosse. That's right. Uh, wow. Yeah. You come from Muslim heritage. Were you the only uh, Muslim family you knew that played uh, the game of lacrosse? Uh, up until recent years, I, I, I didn't know of any other Muslim families in uh, playing the game or, you know, a, a Arab. Uh, There's a couple of Arabs uh, that I, 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 I ran into over my time in, uh, in lacrosse, uh, but uh, it was few and far between. So in some sports, assimilation has become, uh, happened at a greater speed. What, what do you feel would be good for, for lacrosse? We have to recognize we have a, a changing de demographics and we are a much more multinational uh, country. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think lacrosse has kept up with that. Really important for us to develop uh, those uh, relationships and get a much more inclusive uh, uh, mix of people uh, in, in our game. It's absolutely essential. So you were in Fort McMurray uh, first with your family? Yeah, that's right. When I was uh, I just started playing hockey in Fort McMurray. That's the first sport that I really got involved in. Moved down to uh, Edmonton and uh, sort of in the springtime. And I was uh, like every young kid wanted to make friends. And uh, this uh, young guy uh, my, my age just said, "Yeah, I play this game. You should come and try it." And I had no idea what he was talking about. It was an outdoor rink uh, by our school and uh, showed up on a Saturday morning and uh, they gave me this long stick with a net at the end and said, okay, this is the, this is the game. It's the first time I'd heard of it, first time I'd seen it. And uh, uh, you know, it was uh, the first time I got so excited about something. Uh, it was just gravitated to it right away. I've heard that for many, many people, as soon as the stick went in their hand the first time, they knew they had found <laughs> their future that way. Absolutely. <laughs> and you would see it today. You know, you go to these uh, intro uh, uh, events and uh, kids pick up the, the, the ball, uh, the stick and the ball. And what's interesting about it is it's not an easy skill. Passing and catching a lacrosse ball is not as easy as it might be to kick a ball or to, you know, hit a, you know, swing a stick uh, and hit the puck or whatever from the, uh, from the ice or from the ground. So, but that doesn't seem to hold kids back. They don't put it down and go, I don't like this. They keep working on it. So I find that really fascinating and, uh, you know, and I think it's a big plus for us and we got to work with that um, moving forward. Yeah, the, the, the wall or the boards are every uh, beginning lacrosse player's friend. Uh, yeah, isn't that so true? Because you know, that's the one. This is the one sport uh, where the ball comes back to you. You don't have to run around and collect, uh, whether it be golf balls or pucks or whatever. It comes right back to you, and, you, and you're up throwing the ball again immediately. A total of five boys in your family. Where are you age-wise within that five? I guess. So I'm the eldest. Oh. Yeah, I have a uh, my brother Rioth is a year younger than me, and then. Another brother, Salah, who's uh, four years 
and then Natter, uh, another couple of years behind that, and my youngest brother, Marwan, who uh, is 12 years between him and I. How long did it take for your brothers to, uh, to follow your, your footsteps? Well, uh, Rioth, my next brother, uh, was almost immediate. I mean, I think in the next year he jumped on and, and that. And then uh, it just became, you know, part of our family. You, you know, uh, we were both playing it. It wasn't long before uh, Salad uh, just became a, a player as well. So as soon as it became old enough to, to put a stick in your hands, that's when they, uh, that's when they, they started playing. And uh, uh, as a result, uh, I mean, uh, we were all playing at different levels, but uh, there was a couple of years where all five of us did play on the same team at, at uh, senior level. So wh where were your parents from originally? My dad's born in Lebanon, yeah. and uh, my mom was actually born in Prince Albert uh, mm -hmm. from, with the UK Ukrainian heritage. Uh, yeah, so they, they met in Edmonton when my dad immigrated to, to Canada. And what did they think of you playing this game lacrosse? You know, I really, realistically, my parents back in the day were, you know, not the same as parents today. I mean, they knew we played. They would take us occasionally to the rink if we couldn't walk there. And uh, they would sometimes come and play. They really didn't, uh, didn't have a problem with the physicality of the game. But to be candid, I don't think that they truly understood the game all that well. Right. They just, uh, but you know, the only time that they ever really commented about uh, uh, the physicality is uh, when uh, the Calgary Herald, I think, took a picture of uh, my brother on the ground with somebody cross-checking him uh, from behind and my dad losing his temper about why he would let him be caught in that position. That was probably the only time he ever talked about how... <laughs> What physical about the physicality of the sport? Oh my, my! You were seven years old when you first got your stick. Kind of take us through the next like ten years about you know what what happened with minor lacrosse and until you got it right, right before junior. You know back then, I mean, it was a pretty rudimentary sport. I mean, we were practicing outdoors most of the time. It'd be a big deal if we played in in, in what's now called Bill Hunter Arena, uh, and we were. We called the Metal Art Gophers, and uh, you know, it, it's just it, it was a truly sort of uh, game of the neighborhood, and you know, we all, all the kids lived in that in, in that neighborhood or close by, and uh, we stuck together for most of our uh, you know bantam uh, midget career, uh, playing on the same team, and uh, uh, yeah, again, it was just one of those. It was. It was not just a, our, our team sport, but it was also where our friendships were made up of. Still to this day, uh, some of my closest friends still are from that time uh, and still involved in lacrosse in some way. So, uh, you know, we, and we would play the city finals. That would be a big deal back then. Uh, every once in a while, go to a provincial final uh, and, and have some success, maybe not so much in other years. I mean. Uh, you know, but I, I do remember a guy by the name of Peter Gamble, who was my first coach ever, and uh, uh, I remember seeing him in the Canada Summer Games, and it was a big deal like uh, back then. I mean, he was, he was Alberta's star at the time, and uh, uh, so you know, felt good that you had somebody who was so talented teaching us the game, and uh, it was uh, uh, a great experience uh, working with him and. Uh, his family, which, who were very much involved in, in lacrosse uh, in, in the West End of Edmonton. What would you say was your, your strongest attribute with the game? Were you a scorer? Were you a defender? Were you a transition player? Or all of the, the above? or whatever? Actually, I was none of them. So, uh, <laughs> none of the above. <laughs> none of the above. I, I started out playing, and I, uh, I think in Pee Wee, I was playing forward, and one day our our uh, goalie didn't show up for practice, but the gear did. So I put on the gear, and I never took it off after that. So I played uh, goal all my life uh, did you? in, uh, in uh, box lacrosse. When I played field, I was uh, long pole, but a uh, little bit of goal, but not much, yeah. Yeah, so uh, one of those nutty goalies.
So that fateful day when you put on the equipment that was there, yeah. what was the first game like for you? Was that a game that you played or a practice? No, it was a practice. Pra I practiced okay. a few times before I actually played in the game. I mean, I was lucky. I was never really, I wasn't fearful of the ball. I wasn't, uh, I, was, I was, you know, fairly confident uh, of it. And, uh, you know, I don't remember specifically that first game, but I do remember, like, you know, uh, uh, being really, uh, in, really in tune with what was going on out there. And so, uh, really focused on the game. I, you know, I, 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 it wasn't so much about whether I was making the stop or not. It's, it was about the whole flow of the game. And so as a result, there would be stops. And I mean, obviously there'd be goals too, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, once I, I started that, I never once thought again, I was gonna uh, play forward. You enjoyed it? I did, oh yeah, yeah. It was, I had a fantastic career in net and uh, you know, uh, back then the equipment was a little smaller, definitely thinner. We always talk about how rough a sport it is, but I think back then, I mean, the the real painful ones were the the, the shots on uh, you know in the in the wrong part of the equipment that were that I don't think any forward really had to experience. <laughs> Do any of your brothers play goalie? Not in uh, lacrosse. I have uh, two brothers that played goal in hockey, but uh, they were they all played out. So when you guys threw the ball around at home, you were always the guy they shot at? Or <laughs> well, we'd go to the rink and I'd, I would have to take my gear with me, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, out around the house and that, yeah, I still wanted my forward stick out. As I said, I played long pole and field, so I needed to have a little bit of uh, stick skills uh, in order to play that. So eventually you made it to junior age. Tell, tell me about what happened with junior and, and those sorts of things. So the first uh, couple of years, I mean, back then uh, the Edmonton, Edmonton was lacrosse community was really divided up into into areas. Uh, so there was, uh, we were the you know, the uh, West Edmonton uh, team, and there was a team in uh, Southwest, and so about five or six different uh, areas. And uh, it was competitive lacrosse. Skill level was uh, kind of all over the map. And I remember the one year we were uh, told in, I think, my second year of junior that uh, we would be playing, they, they were combining two teams, uh, our hated Southwest Devils uh, team with a guy named Warren Rendon. And uh, just based on that, it sort of changed the game of lacrosse in the Edmonton area. I, there was some, uh, there was some, uh, there's a little bit of time where those, where the two teams uh, took, it took a little time for them to get together and, and, and see that everybody wasn't, you know, the, the bad guy on the other side. So uh, uh, after about two months, uh, we really started to get cohesive and you know, we were able to put a, a pretty skilled team together and, uh, you know, just, on a side, uh, one of those guys that came over was uh, you know, the best scorer on that team, by the, a guy by the name of Chris Grobot, who is now my partner in my law firm. So uh, that just shows you where you can go. And uh, uh, so we, you know, we that year I, we were successful within the province, and uh, we continued to work. And at, and Warren was a very instrumental in in trying to develop the game of lacrosse in not just Edmonton, but Alberta. So in 1979, we, uh, they put together a, a junior A team to compete in the Minto Cup. So we played, it really was a put together team, but it was an important, uh, it was an important event for lacrosse in Alberta. It was held in uh, Calgary at the Max Bell Arena and uh, it was well attended. It was quite a thing for lac the lacrosse community and I think it was the impetus to really getting the game from just being a sort of a, a, a very local area sport to being something that could be more than that. Uh, so we, uh, we did, a, you know, we, we played competitive, we were competitive but we weren't good enough to obviously win. We did beat uh, Burnaby in one of those games so that was a, a big deal. But from there, we started to realize that there's something to build here. 
there's something that we can do that's going to, to become better than, than what, we're, what we are. And we need to do two things. One, we need to get more, more kids involved. And two, we've got to find that, that, uh, that competition and that coaching to take us to that next level. We have the athletes, we just need to know to figure out how to get there. Uh, next year, 1980, we went to the Founders Cup in Quebec and uh, we were successful. We, were the, we uh, won the Founders Cup and we were the first non-Ontario team to win the Founders that, wow. in that year. So that was really the golden age right there with those two years about how movement for the game in Alberta. Yeah, I think it changed the game. I think it changed yeah. the game in, the, in Alberta. Yeah. Yeah, it changed the mindset of, of people. They could see a bigger picture. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, very important time. When you played in the Minto, were there three teams in at that time? BC, yep. uh, Ontario, and Alberta? Yeah, Burnaby, uh, Peterborough, and ourselves. So it was a bit of a round robin. Everybody so played each other. Double and, round robin. Double round robin. And, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah, you beat Burnaby, which is unbelievable. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'd probably be hiding something a little bit. It was kind of a nothing game for them, but it was a big game for us because they were already in. Oh, okay. Uh, so it was the, the final game of, of the round robin. And so we knew, kind of knew where we were, everybody was standing. But we beat them, yep. really. We had played them, actually, in a, a couple of exhibition games uh, earlier in the year. And uh, they thumped us pretty good. Yep. Uh, so you know, we definitely were playing better lacrosse. Yep. And, I, and I think that was important because it taught people in Alberta, that, hey, you can get better at this game. You know, there, there are things that we can do. And then you went to, ended up in senior, I guess, shortly. Like, what year would you have been in senior? Uh, yeah, so I graduated in 81. Uh, I was, I went, I went to a tryout in uh, Victoria for Senior A. And uh, that was uh, the year Alexander was playing. That's when I got a real wake up call as to what, <laughs> what shooting was all about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was it was a very interesting experience for me. I went out there and they uh, they want they had already made a trade to get a goalie, so they were interested in me and, and they wanted me to go play senior B in Ontario, and they had me lined up for the team to go there for for a, a year or two. But you know, I I just couldn't make that commitment. I had you know school and other priorities that I just had to take care of that uh, wouldn't allow me to do that, and you know. So I, I wasn't going to give up on the game, but I was going to go back to Alberta and play in Alberta and see what came of that. So what, what university uh, did you go to for your undergraduate? I went to the University of Calgary. Calgary. Uh, I got a business degree in there. The idea was I was going to come into the family business and, you know, take it from what my, my father had built and, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, fix it up so it became more of a steady business. But after three years, I just realized that he's an entrepreneur and that's what he's always going to be. And uh, I, I just didn't have the same qualities he had. I didn't have that skill set. Yeah. And so, uh, like I said, I'd become a, a, you know, a jack of all trades. I didn't have a specific skill. So I said, okay, you know, I got to do something. I did. Uh, so I applied to law school because, as I said to earlier, my brother had, uh, was a lawyer. And I thought, okay, let's, let's see what this does. And... Uh, uh, ended up going to the University of Alberta for my uh, law degree. And all the while you're playing some senior lacrosse uh, and, and maybe talk about some of the teams that you played for. Yeah, I played, uh, I played for the, uh, the, the, the Edmonton Miners. Uh, we were a, a fairly new club. Uh, we had played, uh, I played for a couple of teams. There was a, the, I played for the, the Outlaws who were playing Sherwood Park at the time. And, uh, you know, uh, they were junior B, uh, sorry, senior B, senior B. B yeah, teams. there was oh. th there, there were three clubs in, in Edmonton that playing senior B. Wow. Wow. We played uh, we played in a provincial league where there was teams in the Calgary, uh, Calgary Mountaineers and the Calgary Shamrocks were two teams that really stood out in my mind. Uh, uh, on a couple of occasions, I got picked up to go to the President's Cup with uh, the Mountaineers and uh, uh, played a number of times with the uh, with the the miners uh, at uh, President's Cup as well. Uh, back in those days, I mean, we were always close. Never quite made it. Uh, I mean, I, I really, to be honest, can't remember how many silver medals we had. 
uh, a little frustrating. Uh, at some point in time, I was transitioning. Uh, we had some really good young goalies. Really didn't have much in coaching, so I was, became a player coach. Yeah. Like literally standing with my gear on and on the on the back bench, uh, <laughs> uh, coaching. So uh, uh, that was uh, some interesting times in that. But uh, yeah, we, you know, we were we were successful on the floor, uh, certainly pr provincially, and uh, to somewhat uh, nationally as well. But just couldn't quite get there. Had some really close games. I can remember playing in uh, uh, the President's Cup in Edmonton and uh, losing to, uh, I believe it was Owen Sound, in a really tough game. And, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, but it just helped us understand that we weren't quite there. Just don't quite, just didn't quite have that maturity that, uh, that the, particularly the Ontario teams, but also BC. Uh, so uh, we need to do something. Had to, had to, had to get better. And I think that was a big part of what happened to us when we, you know, in 2001, when we, you know, going into getting into the junior A. But uh, just, uh, finishing off, I, I really uh, uh, played on, uh, you know, played in, in a, uh, a number of them and then coached a couple of, uh, or coached on three, three of the, Four, sorry, two of the four uh, uh, President Cups uh, that we won. Won once with the Outlaws and we've won three times with uh, the Miners. Besides Calgary and Edmonton for Senior B teams, were there other centers in Alberta that had Senior B? Yep, Red Deer had a team. They were in and out type of thing. They've, they've kind of bounced back between B and C a, a little bit. Uh, they just don't quite have the, 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 the mass to develop that scale level. They've had some very competitive junior B teams and uh, just getting into senior C haven't quite got there yet. Uh, uh, but they still have a very active community and uh, actually the surrounding area has really developed there as well. You actually played senior men's field? Well, we didn't really have field until I got into junior. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, you know and in fact, so what we a couple of things about that. Number one, I mean, I played you know I played in the, in the mostly in the men's league. I played with Jim Burke, as a matter of fact. I, he, when he back in the day, there was a lot of great players that played with us, uh, and uh, you know we, you know we would travel to tournaments in Portland, and uh, we would go to into Vancouver and play in tournaments. We went to the nationals. We won a, a national championships. I think the Victoria Cup in. Uh, uh, back in oh, 1994 or something like that. And uh, we were, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a lot, that was a lot, you know, it was a, such a different game than the box game. It's a different game and it's, but, you know, yeah, the, te the technical skills are there, the strategy is completely different. So, uh, loved that game as well. Ended up coaching in there that a, lot, a lot of years. We had a program which I, I think was really, important where we in the winter time we would practice at a field house and every year we would make a trip out to uh, either the eastern seaboard or down to california and play uh, exhibition games or in tournaments it turned out to be an extremely successful turn uh, uh, thing where we, uh, uh, that's when kids started to learn uh, about opportunities to get in scholarships yeah. uh, just a s small example of, guy by the name of Chris McIsaac, we went to uh, Philadelphia and he got noticed, we, our, our game got, got transferred from a high school, which was too muddy, to a field at St. Joseph's University and uh, coach came out and just was watching and identified a couple of our players and <laughs> they ended up getting scholarships there. Wow. And as a result, he's now a vice president of the second largest mutual fund in the U.S. So, Again, some things, <laughs> some things are just meant to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that, and so, got the opportunity then to come back and coach here. Coached a, a U19 team that won the First Nations. Uh, guys like Devin Ray and Taylor Ray and uh, Darren Hillier, guys like this, uh, young guys. Uh, and uh, that was, yeah, that was great. Uh, great opportunity to 
uh, coach uh, that, that field. You started coaching about what year was that when you began to player coach or, you know, kind yeah. of start to make the... My first coaching was uh, coaching my youngest brother's uh, intermediate team. That was the first time I ever got involved in coaching. I really don't remember the exact year I started yeah. becoming a player coach and that, uh, like I mean... 85 or a little bit later than that or... Uh, even. It probably was around that time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was certainly yeah within that within the next two or three years from that. One, yeah. Yeah. I am uh, surprised how much it resonated with me the just coaching my younger brother's team and that. And uh, I think that's where I really caught the bug at that point because uh, I was not keen on coaching to begin with, but uh, they were they were desperate and uh, uh, they were not very good. I kind of set the rules with them and they bought into it and we had some real success, you know, and that's when I realized how important coaching can be to, to young people. Uh, and uh, I mean, of all the roles that I've had in lacrosse, I find coaching is probably the one of the most, if not the most rewarding thing, uh, because there's nothing more uh, satisfying than to have somebody who years later comes back to you and says, what an impact you, I, I may have had in his life. Or, yeah. uh, and just, you can't, you know, I can't measure that. It's just, you know, it's just an amazing feeling. I just recently had a, a, a young man uh, who's now in New York uh, reach out to me and, and just talking about our recent experience with the, the Minto Cup and uh, talking about how important it was for him to be a part of our organization and that. So and the coaching, so yeah. Was it difficult to coach your brother? <laughs> well, I coached all of them. Oh, yeah, well, no. What's that like with the family uh, time? You're telling them what to do and that kind of thing. Would it... Helps being the oldest, so they were <laughs> used to it. Okay. You know, uh, and uh, no, we we were really close, so I, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we, had, uh, we had a great relationship, so it, it, was, it was fine. At some point, you started getting connected with the NLL. And how did that connection begin, and in what ways were you connected with the NLL over the years? We had a coach, uh, the owner at the time, was a guy by the name of Bruce Urban, who owns a number of RV uh, businesses. And uh, he had a, a cousin of mine that worked there, and uh, my name got mentioned. so. He contacted my cousin and said, do you know this guy? Yeah. So we made the connection there and uh, we held a meeting. They, uh, and he knew me because of, uh, you know, I was fairly well known at that time in, uh, in the lacrosse community and he knew nothing about the game of lacrosse. I'm not sure that he'd even seen a game until he went to a roughneck game. So uh, he reached out to me and we sat down and uh, um, talked about the game and talked about what needed to be done and uh, offered me the opportunity to become a, the uh, director of lacrosse operations and uh, I, I took it from there. I, you know, uh, I think having a bit of a business background uh, made a big difference. Uh, uh, by then I was in the law as well, so all those little things can, can play into it, you know, uh, got the, the, the opportunity to hire, uh, you know, the, GM and coach. I hired Paul Day, and okay, yeah. uh, one of the best <clears throat> decisions I ever made, uh, just you know, on a professional level, but also on a personal uh, level, as we remain, you know, really good friends. So, yeah, it's a, and uh, I was there for three years, and uh, great experience. What, what what year was the first year uh, that you got started with that? I want to say 2006. 2006, yeah. yeah. And I see that you scouted for the Toronto Rock at some point. I did. That was uh, before uh, when Les Bartley was uh, yeah. uh, the coach. Yeah. A uh, guy by the name of Sean Ferris, who I had gotten to know a little bit as well, uh, referred me to them. They were looking for a Western scout. Uh, so uh, they contacted me, and uh, uh, I was happy to do it. Ended up doing a lot of driving back and forth between Edmonton and Calgary to scout the games, and you know, a little more rudimentary uh, the scouting system back then, relying on paper and pen a lot more than tape and that. So uh, 
uh, you know, uh, got the opportunity to meet with uh, Les and great experience that was. Yes. And uh, what a great, great guy he is yeah. and uh, or was. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we just uh, hit it off and I uh, did that. I uh, uh, did it for three years and uh, got a ring out of it, which I didn't expect. But that was uh, the class of the organization at the time. And uh, uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Really, really enjoyed that. Certainly helped me when it became, uh, you know, when I became uh, part of the rush. Do you remember uh, a player or two that you scouted for them that turned into something into the NLL? I mean, uh, I was by then I was involved with my, my junior A team, and so we were, you know, I, I, I can't remember specifically guys that were back then. I mean, we were an afterthought. I mean, we're always, you know, players were getting drafted late from the local areas, like the Roughnecks would dra draft, and maybe, you know, uh, Edmonton would draft a couple. I mean, a, a guy that, like Jordan Cornfield uh, 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 would get drafted by, by them. But uh, back in, I mean, my, my role with Toronto at that time was scouting the games, scouting the, scouting reports about oh, upcoming okay. games and stuff like that. It was I, more game-related yeah. than uh, yeah. player-related. Okay. Yeah. You actually were an assistant coach with the Rush as well? Yeah. I worked with the goalies, but I was more on the back end. Yeah, really a back end guy, you know, uh, working with the defense and and the defensive system. Was everybody using the Les Bartley method that he created to uh, offense defense? <laughs> yes, it was already well defined, you know. Uh, you know, it, it, definitely there were back gate guys, front gate guys, maybe you can go up the front and stay in play, but not very often. Who was the best or among the best goalies that you had at that time for Edmonton? We had some really good ones. Uh, I mean, the one that really stands out in my mind is Patty Campbell, but I'm not yeah. sure if it was just his goaltending or but what a character he was. Like, I mean, you know, I'm sure he still is because he, 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 he really was dynamic. And he could play the game. He could really play the game, but he, you know, it wasn't, as far as he was concerned, it didn't just stop when he stopped the ball. I mean, in his stick, moved it really well, just played really well. We had a few goalies come through our system uh, as a young team, uh, we were constantly uh, evolving. So, uh, I mean, he stands out the most Patty to me. Was the one yeah. Said. How about defenders that you had that were impactful? Well, a guy like Chris McElroy was a guy who was not the most gifted guy there, but he certainly was the most athletic, and uh, probably in my mind the, the the best guy is a guy by the name of Rory Glaves who. Uh, uh, we drafted high in the in our our expansion draft. He's just such a he's the consummate uh, defender. Like he just stay at home, didn't make never made mistakes. Occasionally he could go up the floor and finish, if, you know, but really didn't make that a priority for himself. And uh, yeah, just a solid defender. I was gonna sort of mention I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the you know, we were talking about the development of the game in Alberta. And yes. Just, okay. Um, I just think it's so important to talk about what happened in 2001 when uh, uh, myself and a guy by the name of Dave Ray uh, looked at the opportunity of, of bringing Junior A to, to Alberta on a full-time basis. Uh, we had previously uh, had uh, teams participate after that 1979. We did have uh, a, a team, uh, we were the minors, uh, my brother was coaching that team, and they played in the Junior A BC League, but it was unsustainable. I mean, the costs were prohibitive, uh, and uh, BC really didn't have a they didn't have a real interest in doing this because why would they? I mean, why are they going to incur a bunch of costs to travel across the mountains when they've got six, seven teams within their own area? Just you know, so we recognized that we needed to 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 develop our own league, and. Um, Really, unless we could participate in the Minto Cup, we weren't going to be taken seriously. So I approached uh, BC and Ontario for, for that uh, purpose, and uh, it, it was not well received. Uh, you know, tradition is not always an easy thing to move away from, 
they had tried other uh, options as well before with the round, round robin, uh, as we had said in 1979. They'd also done it amongst themselves where they had a host and uh, uh, provincial winners in that. And so when I, we approached them, we said, uh, you know, we're entitled. We are, we are a member just like you are. We want a challenge for it. And uh, uh, it, there was some real resistance, obviously. But uh, we, in 2003, we, uh, we went to the CLA uh, meetings and uh, insisted upon it. And there were a number of individuals that got up and said they are entitled to it and we're supporting it. And then, you know, uh, and then a, a, a real surprise, a little bit later on, but a real surprise was uh, Dean McLeod. Well, yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> that uh, was a bit of a shocker. And, uh, but he said, you know, if we're gonna make this game better, we need more inclusion. And uh, so he, he, uh, he definitely said, we've got, to, this, we've got to have Alberta as part of this. For the next number of years, it still was a struggle. I mean, there were all sorts of uh, disincentives, uh, you know, to, in their minds to have, uh, you know, this round robin set up. It doesn't match the best of seven and all this. And so for years, uh, it, 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 was a, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't smooth. But eventually, you know, the skill level started to move up. It became a little more competitive. New people came in and began to see the value of having a more inclusive national championship. Uh, and, and, and then uh, Alberta started winning the occasional game against uh, BC and Ontario games in the round robin. And, uh, and therefore it, uh, you know, it became easier to, to, to justify all, you know, why we should be still, why we should be going with this format that we're going at, yep. which is very similar to the Memorial Cup. It continues to evolve, uh, but uh, recently, I mean, the, you know, in the last four or five years, we've been very, well, even before COVID, you know, we've been winning more games in that, in the round robin, but we hadn't been successful when it got to, uh, to, to the, the finals until this year. And, uh, uh, our team, uh, the miners, uh, you know, ended up losing six to five in the f best of three at the end. Mm -hmm. But I think that was, you know, that really was such an important development for uh, lacrosse in, in, in Canada, not just at Junior A, but to show everybody what can happen, what you can do, and why it's so important. Because not only did it make an impact uh, with, amongst the junior A clubs and the junior clubs overall. I think it made an impact over lacrosse overall. We had uh, real, there was a, you know, when you looked at the social media and the TSN and uh, uh, YouTube, the hits that were coming were, were in, in like, I think 25,000. Oh. I don't think we've ever seen that kind of result in, uh, uh, in, in lacrosse uh, at that level. So pretty exciting stuff, like, you know. So uh, I, think it's, I think it's just the, sort of the tip of the iceberg about how this is going to develop, help lacrosse develop throughout uh, uh, Canada. Who do you think the fourth province will be? Great question. Well, I, I mean, technically speaking, just to be clear, Saskatchewan has a team in the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse League. So I think it's gonna be a little bit like, uh, like a junior A hockey where you, it's not so much about provinces, it's more about leagues. That's the way it's sort of set up already. It might be, uh, you know, it might be the First Nations. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they always have the skill. I, I, I would say them for sure if they had a much more developed minor system. It's, you know, I, I think they've got, they've got so much talent there uh, that, uh, you know, uh, I, and I see some great things happening with like the Thompson brothers who, are really trying to bring the game back to, to, to home for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they ever get that going, uh, that, that, that's a great opportunity there. You know, Nova Scotia does, seems to be doing some great things as well. I mean, developing, they're, 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 they're growing, they're, they're evolving as well. You know, it just depends on whoever has the great leadership to, to, to grow the numbers. I'm a big believer in the pyramid. 
you got to get the base before you can get to the, the, the pinnacle. Yeah. So uh, the, whoever gets the most organized to build that base is going to be the next one there. You've done a lot with the, C the La Crosse Canada or the old CLA. T talk about some of your duties that you've had uh, with them over the years. So I was attending on behalf of the Alberta La Crosse Association and I got to a lot of meetings with Soen Gill uh, at that, that weekend. And um, he said to me at that time, why aren't you involved more than what you're involved in? And I said, I think I'm pretty involved. He said, well, we need, why don't you become a box sector chair at, uh, with the CLA? Because he was sitting on the board of the CLA as well. Um, I gave it a little bit of thought. It didn't take me long. I said, yeah, I th I'd be interested in that. So I, I took on that position, and, and I was there. I don't remember the number of years exactly. I want to say six years, maybe, uh, as a box sector chair. And then um, Chuck Miller moved from the director of national championships and created a vacancy. And uh, they asked me if I wanted to take that role on. And uh, I, that one really interested me as well. So I said, OK, I'll take that on. and uh, uh, and. Um, you know, that, that turned out to be a really rewarding experience. And again, I, I think I was in that position t 10, 10 years, maybe more. And then um, stepped away for two years. And then they somehow dragged me back in uh, in, in the last year. So I'm now, again, the director of national championships. And uh, it's, it's an exciting portfolio to have, but I, I'm as interested as I am in the national championships, I'm just as I'm maybe more interested in growing the game. And so being able to sit at the table with uh, the other leaders uh, of lacrosse right now on the board of directors is hugely important to me. I, I think we're at, a, uh, we're at a critical point in our, our development. You know, coming out of this pandemic, uh, every amateur sport has, has, has suffered, but it does create opportunity. There is opportunity there, and I think it's so critical that we find that right formula to grow the game. If we need to grow it first before it, uh, uh, with all the skill that we have at the highest levels to teach and to that, but we need to have the numbers to, to continue to grow it. I mean, I, you know, you just look at pure numbers of what's happening in the U.S., the development of their programs, I mean, they, you know, not that they don't have their own difficulties, but they're growing numbers. And not just at the field game, but their box game is going. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be left behind here. I want to, we, we, we're ahead. We should continue to, be, to st strive to be ahead. And so I, you know, that's why I think it's so important to, to be on the board right now and hope to make some, you know, uh, some, some positive impact uh, in uh, developing leadership uh, so that we can grow. Yeah, you know, I don't know what else I can tell you. Uh, I mean, I just, uh, I mean, just from a personal perspective, I mean, uh, you know, we never know what, you know, how, what, what, what direction our lives are going to go in, and we never know what's going to trigger that. And, uh, uh, you know, I reflect back on, you know, this, this guy named Doug saying to me, you should come and try this game. I mean, I... At that point, it, it had no, I had no idea where that was going to lead me. And uh, I, um, you know, I'm, I'm now fortunate to, to have, you know, to have a really supportive wife, my, Layla, and, uh, and I know we, now, we have a 15-year-old son who's playing the game. I think he's more athletic than I am. I, I don't know uh, where his future in the game will go, but I, it, it doesn't really matter what, what you know what, how far he goes in the game it's just important that he, he's participating in it he loves it and he's going to uh, uh, he's learning so many things out of that and that's a reminder to me about what you know what sport is what amateur sport is particularly and, and how how impactful it can be to everybody so if I can contribute in that's that that that's in that way in some small way then I feel pretty grateful I'm able to do that. So that's, that's really, a, I think, uh, sort of sums it up. Mm -hmm.